Hello coders, this is Jared from Renaissance Coders, and today we are continuing our AI development project in Unity 5. Okay, in the last video we implemented our basic AI, but we did not get a lot of testing done on this AI. So today we are going to add multiple AIs to the scene, and we are going to start making our AI slightly more intelligent. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is fix a really quick error in one of the scripts from the last video. Okay, if you remember back to the last video, we had the basic AI script that was checking to see if the waypoint index counter was greater than waypoints.length. So let's go ahead and take a look at that script really quickly. Let me just zoom in. So essentially what was happening is we were checking to see if this variable got greater than the length of this array. And that statement is right down here and actually I've already fixed it here, but in the last video I simply said if waypoint index is greater than waypoints.length and that will actually run into an out of bounds error. So we need to change this to greater than or equal to instead. The next thing I wanna change from this script from the last video is removing the system, the using system statement. So if we scroll up to the top here, you can see that we have using system. And I'm gonna remove that because we don't really need that here. And I'm removing that for a number of reasons. One, we're going to be using random um, dot range in this video, and if we have using system and using Unity Engine both inside of our script, then we will run into an error where the Unity editor can't decide whether to use system dot random or Unity Engine dot random. So just to simplify things, we're just going to use the we're just going to remove the using system statement. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is go ahead and create a prefab of our current AI third-person controller if you haven't done that already. And to do that you can just go to the assets folder, right click, create, and then create a folder. And you're going to want to name that folder prefabs with a capital P. Okay, and once you do that you can just drag the character from the hierarchy to the prefabs folder and that will generate a prefab. Pretty easy stuff there. Okay, now that we've completed that, we can start moving forward with increasing the intelligence of our AI. And currently we have a pretty good waypoint system in place and a pretty good follow system, but both of these can definitely be improved upon. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video, is improving upon our previous AI. So the first thing we're going to focus on is the waypoint system. Currently our waypoint system is handled through an array of game objects. So down here we have an array and we just have a few game objects that are spread out throughout our scene like this. So as you can see we've got one in each corner right now. And the other thing that we did with this waypoint system is we dragged and dropped the sphere from the hierarchy to our waypoints array. And essentially that's like hard coding the location that we're moving to, which is not really the best way to do that. Um, I should say that there are benefits to having the waypoints laid out like that um, because we have a lot more control over the movement of, of the AI and we know exactly where the AI is going to be next and where the AI is coming from. So if, you, if you're if you building a game where you need just a definite path that will never change, you can definitely use this system. So what we're going to be doing today though is we're actually going to create a more random system of patrolling from the waypoints. And this is actually fairly easily achieved. And what we're going to do to achieve this is we're really, only going to, we're really only going to have to change around a few lines in our script. So let's go ahead and change those lines around. Let's open up the basic AI script. Actually, let's do this first. I do want to just quickly explain how this is going to work. Okay, so let's go over how this is going to work really quickly. Essentially what we're going to do is we're, we are going to tag each of our spheres with a tag and that tag is going to be waypoint and that's pretty easy to do all you have to do is go and you can just click on the waypoint tag or you can click add tag and then click this plus button and then you can add it here I already have it so I'm not going to create it again and then another really cool thing you can do is actually select all the spheres and then just tag them like that okay and so what we're actually going to do in our script is we're going to look for all of the game objects that have this tag and add it to that array and we're going to start at a random value for our index. So essentially we're going to 
randomize from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and start working on that in our script. So to change this, we actually need to remove the initial value set for the private int waypoint index. Okay, the next thing we need to do is inside of our start method, because we're not setting a value for this int anymore. We need to do this here, and we also need to set up the array or initialize the array. So we're just going to go here and we're going to say waypoints is equal to game object dot find game objects with tag waypoint. Okay, and what's that what that's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to find every game object that is that has a tag of waypoint and add it to this array. All right, the next line we need to add is waypoint index is equal to random dot range zero and waypoints dot length so essentially we're just setting this initial value to any value between zero and the number of game objects inside of this array okay and that's all we really need to change inside of our start method next we're going to add edit the patrol method that we created in the previous video. And what we're actually going to do here is we're just going to remove all of this. Okay? And we're going to say waypoint index is equal to random dot range zero waypoints dot length. So again, all we're really doing here is just saying find a random number between zero and the length of this array. And that's going to happen every time you get too close to, or every time you arrive at the waypoint you're currently moving towards. Okay, and that really should be all that we have to change inside of this script for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the game. Okay, now that we're back in the Unity Editor, editor we're going to go ahead and click play here. Well, first let's make sure that this looks good. Okay, actually it's still got the previous values stored. So I'm just going to reset that there. And let's make sure that it actually initializes correctly. So click the play button. And there we go. So it did initialize correctly. We've got a size of four, which is that's how many waypoints we currently have. And it's pulling in each of those waypoints. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to the scene here and we're going to look and see or watch the patrol method and the cool thing that you can do here actually is just increase the patrol speed you know so if we just bump this up you know you don't really want to sit here and watch this guy walk around all day so if we just bump that up we can actually watch him sort of sprinting through the scene and this is a much more randomized behavior than we had before because before he was just going around the outside of the level and now he's really sort of going to a bunch of different waypoints at different times. Okay, so that's going to cover the randomization of the patrolling. The next thing I want to actually do here is go ahead and show how easy it is to just sort of create a new or a few more waypoints. And to do that you can just do Command D on Mac which just duplicates and I'm just going to move some more waypoints around because I want a more want them to spread a little more around the scene here. Okay. And so now I've got my waypoints spread out a little more. I'm just going to play, press play again so that way we can watch the patrolling behavior again. And as you can see he's actually already moving towards one of our new waypoints here. And I'm, again I'm just going to increase the patrol speed. And again, he's moving. Now, this is really random, essentially, because he's just sort of going all over the place. Um, so this would be much more difficult to avoid as the player, you know, with, with a path like this. And if that's what your game's all about, is sort of direct confrontation, then this may be, may be an interesting solution for you to have sort of random patrolling, so that way you, the player doesn't memorize, you know, where the AI is going to go next. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. And the last thing we're going to do here, actually, is we're going to go ahead and add a few more of this prefab into the scene. And we're going to go ahead and press play once we get these guys in there again. So I'm just going to add maybe five of these guys in total. 
one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And now let's press play and see what happens. Okay. Everything's working pretty well. Actually, it looks like we have three that may be moving towards the same waypoint. So that's that's one of the issues with random, um, with a random system is you may ha may end up. Oh, it's, it looks like this guy's not going to turn. So that's one of the things you may run into with a more random solution is you may have, you know, multiple AI moving to the towards the same spot. And again, it's it's really up to like how you're building your game and the mechanics of your game and you know whether you need a set path or you're going to do a randomized path. The good thing is they do avoid each other quite well. Okay, so the last thing I actually wanted to talk about what in this video is the waypoints. Currently, the waypoints have a mesh renderer on them, and that's why they're showing up as small spheres throughout the scene. And I did that just for demonstration purposes. But if you don't want them actually showing up like that, you can just select all of them and then turn off the mesh renderer. And now the waypoints will not be visible. So if I actually go to this spot over here looking for the waypoint... Here we go. The waypoint is no longer visible. Actually, I wonder if I can sneak through the level without the, any of them catching me. It should be pretty difficult because I have no idea where they are. <laughs> ah, I got caught. Oh my god. Two, two of them caught me. Yeah, so that's a little more difficult when you have random pathing because you have no idea where they are, you know? Okay guys, that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we are going to add a few states to this basic AI and extend some more functionality. Be sure to like the videos if you like this series, and subscribe if you like the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.